this has the, the burden of proof reversed. It's not that I have proof that there is no God. I can't prove that there's no Apollo or Zeus or Isis or Shiva. I mean, these are, these are all gods who might exist. But of course, there's no good evidence that they do. And there are many things that suggest that these are all the products of literature. When you're looking on the mythology shelf in a bookstore, you are essentially perusing the, the graveyard of dead gods. Uh, the God of Abraham has exactly that status. So it's not that I can prove that he doesn't exist. It's that it's obvious that there's no proof attesting to his existence. And when you look at the kind of wishful thinking that has propped up faith for millennia, there's every reason to think that a culture of faith is a culture of deception of children and self-deception on the part of the adults. Uh, and the one thing I, I can say with certainty is that these books show no sign of being authored by an omniscient intelligence. And that really is the only thing you need to be certain about to torpedo Judaism and Christianity and Islam. The Bible and the Quran are deeply inadequate books on every level, scientifically, historically, medically, aesthetically, ethically, spiritually, contemplatively. These are just not the best books we have on any topic. Uh, they should be if they were written by the creator of the universe. So this is Russell's teapot argument. Can you prove that there's not a China teapot circling the sun between Mars and Earth? No, you can't prove that. But is there any reason to think that such a teapot exists? No. And the burden of proof is, of course, on the one who asserts this seemingly outrageous truth claim.